welcome to my couch and happy Halloween. Uh, I've been asked to make a video about how to make your combs last longer and uh, this is what I'm going to do in this video. As far as combs are concerned, I generally look for two things in order to assess whether the comb is to be thrown or not. And uh, that is the presence of this groove plus the presence or not of the scallop. Um, the scallop is again a little bit of a safety device. It's not absolutely necessary for you to have a scallop, but it helps. Uh, whereas this groove is meant to catch dirt and fat as the cutter moves back and forth. So it's absolutely vital that you have one. Uh, when you do not have, uh, when you have grounded the combs so much that there is no groove left, as in this one right here, there's basically very little groove left here and here. Um, the the cutter will be touching all uh, across the whole length, therefore getting warm, uh, therefore getting um, dull faster. Also, all of the dirt uh, that uh, gathers underneath the cutter will uh, build kind of a of a layer of dirt underneath, and that of course doesn't help you shearing. Uh, so I would say this comb is pretty. I mean, I'm throwing this one because, as you see, it's a bit damaged here. But you see that you have maybe half a millimeter of groove left, so you might be able to use it once or twice. But when you see that this groove is gone, then I recommend that you throw the, the comb. As you see, I have very little scallop here. Uh, but as far as the scallop is concerned, this is not a problem. The only thing you do is you just export the comb again from the top, like I've shown you in the other video. And then you make sure that the sides here are not sharp. Right? So even with a comb with basically no scallop left, as long as there is a groove, you can still use it. Um, it might work uh, better, for example, on very tight skin, uh, sorry, very tight wool, uh, because the, the further ahead your, comb, uh, your cutter is, the easier it will, it will cut, since it starts cutting uh, fast, uh, it starts cutting earlier than if you have a comb with a long scallop and you have to put your cutter way back like that. Uh, basically the rule of thumb is uh, tight wool requires your cutter to be very close to the to the uh, bottom uh, top of the teeth. Open wool does not require that so you can even put your put your comb uh, your cutter all the way back. So for example this one is is being like you have a lot of scallop here but there's basically none left here and here uh, this is because of the way you sharpen or me uh, how you sharpen your combs uh, difference in pressure difference in the speed of uh, of how the how the machine is uh, is spinning i might make a video about that uh, but for example this tooth right here has got very little scallop so what i would do is basically just make sure for the first that it's not sharpen this direction by dressing it like that so when I'm happy with the result what I do is I make sure that it's not sharp on the other side either like that uh, this way you're basically prolonging the life of your comb instead of having to throw it because oh no I have no more scallop left I have the teeth are pointy I'm afraid I might cut the animal but you just build a little bit of a safety right here and this is still a very fast comb because it's thinner, therefore enters the wool faster. You can put your cutter all the way up and will help you, for example, if you're sharing tight wool and, and such like. Um, as far as the cutters are concerned, uh, I know you see here I have a full thickness cutter and a pretty <laughs> uh, worn out cutter. Uh, this is a slow cutter because of course you, uh, this whole thing has to go through the wool first and then it will start cutting, right? Uh, so the thicker the cutter, the slower it will cut. Uh, that's why you can, uh, for example, buy uh, uh, what's it called, uh, gr uh, ground down cutters directly from, uh, from the maker and they'll cut faster. And this is the reason why many professional shearers, if they want to be really fast, they use ground down cutters like this, like this is about, I don't know, two millimeters or something. Um, and uh, it's 
harder to use or something like this because you have to really know what you're doing. You have to be aware of the fact that your cutter is very thin. Uh, therefore, uh, you have to know exactly where it goes and so on and so forth. Uh, but this is a very fast cutter. I would say two things. Uh, the first one is you can use a cutter basically as far as you like. Uh, a rule for me is when I start not seeing this little uh, uh, this uh, little step right here. So when this part is when I start grinding into this inner part, then I know that okay, I'm I'm basically at the end of the life. But I know that there are shearers who will only replace a cutter when you start seeing the mark left from the chicken feet, uh, the chicken feet go here, uh, the mark left from the chicken feet on the comb as the cutter goes back and forth. Basically the cutter is so thin that those tiny little points that you, you have at the, uh, at the top of the chicken feet will point out through and leave a mark here. I, I'm not really sure I would do that, but it's it's possible to, to use a cutter as much as you like, basically. Also, one last thing. Um, when you're using a full thickness cutter, there are no problems. You just put it there, you you get your lead right, depending on what kind of, uh, of, a, of an animal you're shearing, what kind of wool, and the cutter will just do its job. Uh, but when the cutter is uh, starting to be very thin, especially if you have a pronounced hollow grind, I'll make a video about the hollow grind, of course, sometime in the future. Uh, what can happen is, say that you're cutting, uh, you're shearing uh, tight, tight wool, so you put your cutter all the way up, and you have a precise, uh, quite a, uh, quite a lot of hollow both on the cutter and and on the comb. What happens is, the cutter will catch here, right here. This part of the cutter will catch into the tooth there, therefore stopping your handpiece and you will be left wondering what, what did I do wrong. Um, basically it's like, like this, bam. It catches right there and it stops you in your track. Boom. And the machine is not going to work. And so you might start uh, taking apart the machine and you don't know what's wrong. You don't know what's wrong with the handpiece. Uh, my suggestion in that case is change for a thicker cutter or move your cutter back so that you know that this little part here is always under the end of your teeth. So there you have it, how to get the best out of your cutters according to me. Um, I don't need to tell you how, much, how expensive these things are, so you want to get the best out of them the longest life. Uh, I will uh, in the future make videos about what hollow grind is and how to grind them, uh, root grinding or flat grinding and so on and so forth. For now, thanks a lot and have a happy Halloween again.